This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So, having gone through in the previous sessions and looked at the dividend valuation model to value our equity, and then we advanced that on, didn't we? Having looked at it with constant dividends, to look at it how dividends would then grow at a constant annual rate. Uh, we're now just going to move things on ever so slightly and still thinking about discounting back to present value to work out the value of equity. But what we're going to go through and do now is instead of looking at dividends, we're going to go through now and look at the cash flows that the entity generates. Okay, uh, And by discounting those cash flows back to present value, we can go through there and work out the value of equity. Okay, So it... It's a similar process to looking at the dividend valuation model, but looking at it from, from a different perspective. Previously, we've just looked at the dividends. So when we use the dividend valuation model, it's very useful if you're trying to value a minority shareholding. Uh, but if you are trying to value the whole equity, then we don't want to just look at the dividends that you receive. We want to look at the cash that the business generates because that cash is what the shareholders are going to be entitled to okay uh, so when we're going through and looking at the discounted cash flow method of valuing equity we start talking about what are referred to as free cash flows okay or free cash flow to you and i we will write it as f c f okay so, so what are free cash flows you know we've heard about cash flow haven't we when we've looked at previous areas of study uh, so we've thought about uh, statements of cash flows, when we've looked at net present value techniques, IRR techniques, payback techniques, we've spoken about cash flow, but what do we specifically mean about free cash flow? Okay, what, what, what's a subtle difference? Well, free cash flow effectively is looking at the cash flow that the business generates that is then available to the providers of finance. So technically here we're looking at the cash flow that is available to be able to pay back as interest in terms of what goes back to the debt holders, so those who have lent us the money. And also as well, looking at what is left then to pay back dividends, so what we therefore have left to pay back to the shareholders. Okay, So when we're looking at our free cash flows, uh, our free cash flow is the cash flow that is available to the lenders and the shareholders of the business. Okay, uh, And what you've got up there is, is a bit of a, a pro forma, if you like, to go through and be, to be able to calculate those free cash flows because what we do is we take a profit figure and then that profit figure is then converted into a cash flow figure okay and what we do is we very much think about it like we did when we were in was it f2 and f1 uh thinking about your cash flow statement and looking at your cash generated from your operating activities using was it the the indirect method. Remember that process whereby we took the operating profit, we adjusted for any non-cash items and then adjusted for any movement in working capital, so increases or decreases in inventory, receivables and payables. Can you remember when we did that? Vaguely, roughly? It's in there somewhere. Well, this is exactly the same. Look what we do. Uh, we start off there with our operating profit. So again, you're looking at your profits before interest and tax. Uh, you add on any depreciation because, again, that is a non-cash item. Don't worry, we tend not to, at this level, see anything more complicated than depreciation. So we are unlikely to see impairments, amortization that might need to be added back on, or maybe adjustments that we saw, such as profits or losses on disposal. Here, we take the operating profit and add back any depreciation. Uh, we then need to go through there and deduct any investment in your non-current assets uh, because that is cash that is then spent, isn't it, to help generate those profits. And once that cash is spent, it's not available to the debt holders or the shareholders, is it? So we have to deduct any investment in non-current assets. Likewise, uh, when we go through there and look at your investment in working capital, uh, that there is in brackets because what you have there is overall you have an increase in your working capital. 
Okay, if you have more working capital and increase in it, you have to spend more to generate that additional working capital, don't we? Uh, so you've spent more on your inventory, receivables and payables. Conversely, be careful, always be aware on those tricky multiple choice objective test questions. What happens if there is a, a reduction in working capital? If there is a reduction in working capital, it's because you've sold your inventory, you've collected the cash in quicker from your customers, uh, you've delayed the payment to your supplier, so therefore you have an increase in your cash. Okay, so just be careful. Increase in working capital is an outflow. Decrease in working capital is an inflow. Okay. Uh, after that, we then need to deduct any tax payments. Uh, normally here, the way in which we work out the tax payment is just to take your operating profit and multiply it by the tax rates. Okay, there's never anything more complicated than that. You're not expected to do a full blown tax computation. Just take the profit and multiply it by the tax rate and deduct that tax cash flow. Once you've done all those adjustments, that then gives you your free cash flow. So remember, that is the cash that is then available to the, the debt holders to be paid as interest and the shareholders to be paid as dividends. Okay. How can we then use that free cash flow to then go through and value the equity? Uh, well, what we do is we take the free cash flows. We look at them usually as a perpetuity or they could be an inflating perpetuity. So we need to be careful about that. But because we have the cash flows are attributable to both the debt and the equity holders, we need to discount at a suitable discount rate that gives the required rate of return to the debt holders and to the shareholders so therefore that suitable discount rate is your weighted average cost of capital so once you've discounted those free cash flows at your WAC that will then give you what we refer to as that the value of the business okay now the value of the business is not the same as the value of equity because the value of the business is essentially valuing all the claims on the business so the claims that the debt holders have the claims that the equity holders have. So when we've discounted the free cash flows at the weighted average cost of capital, that value of the business is the total of all the claims that the debt and the equity holders have on the business. We're trying to go through and value the equity. So we don't want to include the value of the debt. So therefore, from the value of the business, we need to subtract the value of the debt. And that will then give us the value of the equity. Okay, so do just be very, very careful there. Discount the free cash flows at the WAC. That gives you the value of the business or the value of the entity, i.e. the claims in total on the business itself, which is the value of the equity plus the value of the debt. Therefore, once we have the value of the business to work out the value of equity, we then go through there and deduct the value of the debt. Okay. Practice the question and you'll soon get used to it and we'll see a question in the next video. Do just be aware, however, it's a great area for the examiner to go through there and try and catch you out. Uh, because you've also got what is referred to as your free cash flow to equity. Now, your free cash flow to equity is looking at the cash flow that is available just to the shareholders themselves. So effectively, it looks and calculates your free cash flow, but from your free cash flow, will then deduct any payments that are made to the debt holders so that what we are left is the cash flow that is then available to the equity holders. So what we have to go through and do there when we're working out your free cash flow to equity is we need to deduct the payment of interest to the debt holders. And that will then give us our cash flows that are then available to the equity shareholders. Okay, Everything else, respectively, that is left within the business, isn't it? Now, if you're then using your free cash flow to equity to value the equity, all we need to go through and do there is to go through there and discount the free cash flows to equity at the cost of equity because if you've got your free cash flow to equity which are the cash flows that are available to the equity holders then you need to discount at a suitable rate of return that the equity holders require which is the cost of equity okay
Happy with that? Let's just quickly summarize, shall we? Make sure that we're happy with it. Okay. Uh, so we're trying to value the equity, aren't we? Uh, we are focusing on free cash flows. And we're going to discount those free cash flows back to present value. Now, the free cash flows are those cash flows that are available to the debt and the equity holders. So when we're trying to work out the present value of them, we will discount at the weighted average cost of capital because that is the return required by both the debt and the equity holders. However, once you've done that discounting, that will give you the value of the business. And that value of the business is the value of the claims that the debt and the equity holders have. So effectively, the value of the business is the value of the equity plus the value of the debt. To get the value of equity from our calculated value of the business, we need to deduct the value of the debt, don't we? And that will give us our value of equity. If you then wanted to work it out as the value per share, you would divide the value of equity by the number of shares in issue. That's for another day. The free cash flow to equity, however, is the cash flow that is attributable or available to the equity shareholders only. So we calculate it by working out the free cash flow and then deducting the interest that we are going to pay to the debt holders. That free cash flow to equity can then be used to value the equity by discounting it at the cost of equity. You've got it. Excellent. OK, so free cash flow to equity at the cost of equity. Free cash flow at the WAC deduct the debt. Technically, it should give you the same answer. OK, there we have it. OK, what we'll do is in the next video, we'll go through and put some numbers to the theory. I'll see you then.